Hello and a very warm welcome to this second ever virtual college choral even song coming to you from St. Hugh's College, Oxford University, today the fourth Sunday in Eastertide. It's lovely to have you. Everyone is most warmly welcome, whether you are a person of faith or not. I'm with you again, of course, actually, from a corner of my home in Blade in Oxfordshire, which is just outside of Oxford University, and I'm with you today from my office in my home. Amidst the UK lockdown, we're going to be broadcasting our services in exactly this fashion on a dedicated Facebook page and a YouTube channel, and I've provided you with links on the college website in our chapel term card, and some of you will have received an email from me even today giving you the link information. Music is going to come to us each week, as today, from our own choir, who are working very hard behind the scenes to record bits of music for us, and also guest choirs week by week. Everything that you need you'll find on your screen. If you'd like to join in along with the words, you'll see everything that you need there in front of you. And so we join in our traditional greeting, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Let us join in now with our first hymn.
reading from the Gospel according to St John, chapter 10. Jesus the Good Shepherd. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wonder, would you rather be a wolf or a sheep? The imagery of sheep and thieves and robbers in this passage today from St. John's Gospel brings to mind, at least for me, an Academy Award-winning film in which images of sheep and wolves abound to great effect as commentary on the human condition and on wider society. In the film, which is called Training Day, a rookie narcotics cop uh, known as Jake Hoyt is assigned to serve with Alonzo Harris for his first training day, the inexperienced Jake learning many things that aren't included in the pages of a police officer's handbook, certainly. The young rookie is instructed by this jaded senior detective that sometimes an officer has to step beyond the law stepping beyond the rules, even if that means theft or drug use and possibly murder, in order to enforce the law. Such is the reality and the extent of the wickedness in society in the senior officer's view. This senior detective, Alonzo, explains, and I'm quoting from the script, in order to protect the sheep, you've got to go after the wolves, and to get the wolves, you've got to be a wolf. So are you a wolf or a sheep, he asks. Human nature and the dog-eat-dog or perhaps wolf-eat-sheep world in which we appear to live tends to make us think that we must be a wolf, otherwise we'll be eaten, and we sure won't be able to help our fellow sheep by being simply sheep. We might think that to be the strongest and the most fierce of the two, the wolf would obviously be the better. Or we might even simply think that being a wolf sounds like a lot more fun. Either way, we find ourselves as a university and a college scattered, whatever our view, socially separated in response to this present pandemic, a bit like sheep without a shepherd. Among the richest images in the Jewish and the Christian scriptures are the pastoral illustrations depicting people precisely as sheep. And God, usually in the New Testament, of course, Jesus, as a shepherd. Israel, where both the Old and New Testaments, as we have them today, were conceived, were born, was an agrarian culture. The Israelites were all about the land, which they had to know how to work in order to live, to survive. These were rural people. They were pastoral. They knew how to grow things, and they tended sheep. Sheep were, in fact, everywhere. And this is why illustrations of sheep and shepherds appear and were indeed powerful and helpful to the people to whom they were written. But how might we understand these images today of sheep and of shepherds, especially with society pressuring us to be anything but sheep? What do these scriptures mean about us and about God when talking about sheep and shepherds? Well, surely we all know what sheep are already. Let's try a good old Oxford-type definition. Woolly, ruminant, quadrupedal mammals of the genus Ovis family Bovidae, related to goats, especially Ovis aries, bred in a number of domesticated varieties. Well, that's a very precise definition, but it's not very helpful at all for our purposes today. Clearly, it does not apply to us either. There are very unlikely to be any four-footed mammals listening to this homily right now. The images in the Bible are about sheep, meant to define what we are like and what God is like and how we are to act and react accordingly. How we are to be is the understanding. This rich pastoral imagery is thousands of years old, of course, and we bear that in mind, and yet it is still relevant and can be helpful. Psalm 23, which we've heard sung today in our music, amplifies this idea, showing us just what a special relationship this is. Many of us know the words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. These are positive images of sheep and shepherds, indeed. In the New Testament, Jumping ahead many centuries, Jesus is depicted as the good shepherd, 
the ultimate example of God's love and care for the world and its people, which are indeed his creations. St. John chapter 10, our gospel reading, describes exactly the pinnacle, the ultimate way in which Jesus is this good shepherd and we are sheep. By Jesus' definition, he, like a good shepherd, calls out to his people in the world in order to lead them, and all who hear his voice and follow are his sheep. Jesus' description here fits what the word, in fact, church means. Church, in the original Greek language, means the called out ones, called out to be an assembly, following the voice of God. There are certainly many deep and mysterious mysteries uh, in this passage, some of which are, quite frankly, beyond us definitively. For instance, did Jesus mean that he is the only way among religions in this passage, and so forth? In a good sense, the answers to these questions and the questions themselves are beyond all good sheep. We should ask the questions. I'm not saying that we shouldn't, and we should ponder them as best we can. Yet, can we imagine a real woolly sheep having such questions of its good and trustworthy shepherd? It is in that sense that we all really need to do is hear the shepherd's voice and follow faithfully. The rest is in the good shepherd's capable hands. So really, these passages are about trust. There is, of course, this negative image of people as sheep, by which is meant anyone who blindly follows another without thinking, without asking questions, often being led to destruction. That is not the meaning of this passage. Thinking of this entire country and of other countries and societies during this difficult time of international pandemic, we recall that the Gospel reading today refers to thieves and bandits. Remember Prime Minister Boris Johnson in his very first news conference after a long recovery from COVID-19 just outside his home, essentially calling the coronavirus a bandit. He referred to it as an invisible mugger that had to be tackled. The UK has been in a pretty serious situation. Anyone living here knows that with COVID-19, like many other places throughout the world. And it's good that we remember we are not quite out of danger yet. COVID-19, like a bandit or mugger, to which Morris Johnson compared it, not unlike a wolf in many ways, has threatened, has been killing hundreds of people per day in this country. But by following those shepherding us, caring for us, we've now passed, we are told, the peak of the infection level. And if we keep following, if things hold as they are, everything is getting better, albeit slowly. We might think it's hard to be a wolf or a sheep in the context in which we find ourselves stuck at home, really, for the most part of every day, even working from home. And yet remember that we live in an electronic age through which we can still affect people from the confines of our homes, either negatively or positively. These means, social media platforms and so forth, can become places to rant and to spread negativity, even to really hurt other people. Or we can use them as tools to spread hope and kindness. And has there ever been a time in our world, in this country, in which we need hope and kindness more. Many of us, we must remember to live with others, either housemates or family, and being a sheep rather than a wolf uh, will no doubt be greatly more appreciated in our present confined quarters. To paraphrase that character's question from the film with which we started, would you rather be trapped in home with a wolf or a sheep? I think we'd all choose to be trapped with the sheep. We don't have to be wolves in order to survive in this world, like the world tries to tell us, saying that we must be wolves in order to succeed, in order to survive, or even to protect ourselves and others. The Lord can be our shepherd is today's message in our gospel reading, and we can trust God to protect us, to lead us in the right path, and to help us to lead others along that same path. Jesus is especially trustworthy in today's imagery, being unique among all of the shepherds. The image is of Jesus not only as God, God's Son, understood as having created the sheep he is leading, but also Jesus 
uniquely is a shepherd who is who is at once also a sheep. Think about that. A shepherd who is one of the sheep is the image. Jesus is God become human, is the Christian idea. He was a lamb led to the slaughter, a sacrifice for our wayward sheep-like ways. He died, was buried, and rose again, is the Christian story. It is this great mystery that we remember as we gather together as one flock, and this we continue celebrating throughout Eastertide. It is a good thing to be a sheep today. Good wolves, frankly, are in short supply, and we have such a good shepherd indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It has been wonderful, truly, to have you with us for this second ever in history virtual choral evensong from St. Hugh's College, Oxford University. Warmest thanks to our choir for their contributions, and to our organ scholars Christoph Kolar and Jonathan Watt for their music and their choral guidance. If you are watching on Sunday evening, we're going to have virtual drinks now at approximately 7.15 p.m. after this service. You can join us by using the Zoom link, which was sent to all college members in an email today. And that same Zoom link information is going to be on our Facebook page at the end of this service. It would be lovely indeed to see you, even if you only stay for a couple of moments over a drink. We end with our traditional grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.